Hello and welcome back to the show. So, Dan, we are into our second map, which is going to be Dust 2 between these two teams. We had a long cache. And again, now we go into Dust 2. Um, again, we haven't seen much of, well, any of Selfless really, ourselves. So there's not really much prediction to be done. We're just going to bear witness to the madness. We need to come up with more products, I think, as well. Because we, we've... we've uh, we have a good headline product. I think this match will give us the inspiration we need, the creative uh, juices, creative drive we need to to get there. And uh, also, you know, hopefully to see some more innovation from from Exo Bay because you know they did some stuff on on cash, for example, that we are not really typically used to seeing. Uh, there's a few things, you know, maybe only if there are maybe only small things, but you know, innovation or new things, nonetheless, it, it's very interesting. To to us to see, and obviously it shows a lot about you know their preparation and, and the kind of game that they want to play as a team. So um, the other thing that's cool too is that we didn't see you know not in, there wasn't anything incredulous from DSR, and previously when we had seen them play, it was him that was like we you know we watched him on, on Mirage I believe it was, and we we're like whoa this guy is definitely someone to be to uh, to watch out for. So we'll have to see if he's going to be stepping up in this match. Of course, it would be a great time to do it on the CT side. And I like this little setup in the meta still is the aggressive catwalk play from CTs, but they have gone aggressive just in the do double doors there by Xbox and it's not gonna pan out. Relics will get the first frag and we will, we will see the uh, the back of Relics now as he moves slowly back in towards the uh, the upper dark area away from that lower dark where he claimed that frag and it looks like Selfless is gonna take that man advantage. They're gonna take it and they're gonna bum rush no one on the B-bomb side. Oh, the nade was solid, and he's getting the taps in now. Three kills from no one. Is it enough damage? It should very well be enough damage as the rest of Ape's teammates from Exo Bay start to coordinate themselves back in to the bomb site. Now Mitch is going to get the plant there, very safe indeed. Ape for the pop. Ooh, almost a headshot there, I'm sure. Ape will finally get that headshot that he needed. And the rest of his uh, his comrades will be dancing around him, and uh, observing the majesty of his bomb defusal skills. Very majestic indeed. So Exo Bay will win that CT pistol. They're going to start off with some good economy. All they have to do now is be safe against what should be a full eco from Selfless. Dust Two is a map where you very rarely see the bomb plant round loss followed up by the fall by execute or fall by set piece onto the b bomb onto the a bomb site which is typically the the best option and it's fairly reliable but uh, you rarely do that and it's because the ak's are so good in the third round you just immediately will have an advantage despite losing the first two rounds in uh, weaponry so exo bay looking to hold on to uh, their equipment here and uh they are getting some damage in so far, selfless, you know, not getting uh, too much in the way of tags themselves. Exo Bale still, still uh, fully healthed up. And here goes Mainline. No grenades to flash him in. He's going to have to get it raw. And boom! DSR. It's going to be splattering terrorist blood all over the wall, James. There's blood all over the wall. But it's also no longer clean. The T's have a good opportunity to. Well, they had a good opportunity to move on to short quickly, but DSR and Slemmy quickly rotated, perhaps realizing what was going on and hearing them on short. Nice smoke goes down, and Selfless are stuck. They're on the eco, and there is not much to be done for the team. Scouts coming in, but ooh, the Deeg. Ape trying to clean up here. The double feet coming in from the T, so nice coordination, nice quick reaction there. But again, it is an eco for the Selfless side, so... They've taken a scout down so far. Slemmy should not have too much trouble cleaning this up should they push towards A. And it seems that they might because there is a flank coming in from top mid, which is quite brave on an anti-eco 4 versus 2. So we go, got a nice spray down with a fan mass, and the round is done. Minimal damage taken by the selfless team. Absolutely. And now it's the AKs. And the thing about this round, again, is, is that when you get all these AKs and, you, and you're thinking to yourself, okay, we know they don't have an AWP yet. We know there's probably a SMG still. You need to get those AKs into position to to cause carnage. And uh, Long is a great place to try to do that. If you're going to use invest in some nades, um, you can get some good nades out there you and, and just bum rush it as a team, get some control there. But they've opted not to do that. Instead, they want to find their, the uh, the advantage with the AKs elsewhere. And, um, it looks much more like a default here from DT side. The only 
a real concern for them is just that that lack of utility is going to be somewhat annoying to deal with. CTs aren't suffering from the same issue, however. And Selfless will find themselves towards uh, Catwalk now, so if they are thinking about the A play, they better pick up the bomb because it's still at T-spawn, James. That's a good bomb at T-spawn, Dan. Lemmy's playing close to the smoke. He's actually going to push through it as well. The aggression from Obey is mad, but Slimmy is making a lot of noise and he will move back. So uh, he is telling Selfless, you better make sure you got somebody outside long, otherwise I'm going to take long. <laughs> so Slimmy and Bree still there. Mitch and Relic still hanging around. Maybe not sure what to do. Nifty actually is pushing over towards A, it seems, and uh, his teammates are doing the same. Can the bomb get rotated there selfly? Uber's going to have to make sure nobody picks off the bomb from mid doors where DSR is facing. He will have some information for his team and hear the sound, of course. DSR is going for a flank now, but Uber is there to try and stop him. And indeed, he will take him by surprise. Relic's still holding down the long door. So there's two players, the two CTs in long are completely isolated now. We've got Ape and no one coming in from CT spawn. So it's a good team. Yeah, they're definitely able to find uh, all these advantages on the aim battles with those AK-47s. There's still some CTs lurking around though, maybe you know, they a, a series of kills, but this is getting worse and worse and worse, and the favorable engagements just mount up too much, and Exo Bay will lose the round. And this is the problem. This is this is the strength of that, uh, that bomb plant as the T's on that pistol round, even though you lose it, is that now the CTs are already in a spot where they, they don't have any money. Once you win that uh, round, which is a little bit favourable to do anyway, so uh, and it, it always feels horrible, doesn't it, to to be in that position on, on CT side of dust too. That's the worst thing ever. And they're going to go. Exo Bay are going to go with a four-man stack towards the B bomb site, leaving Slemmy alone, alone in a cold, cruel well, some might say, towards the A bomb site. And uh, the bomb rush into this position is it has limited success. I suppose they were all expendable, but there was a great, great deal of loss of life there, James. I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Nifty is in C1, so uh, it might be hard for the CTs to save their weapons in this situation. Slemmy over behind Blue, well, oh, he doesn't have, he doesn't have a weapon to save. It's just Ape with the uh, AK-47. Slemmy, I don't, I can't imagine he's going to get close enough to get a knife kill in this situation where Relics are just going to start running as soon as he sees things are clear. Indeed, so can you get the frag? Aww. No! Should have realised that. Ah, Because he's never going to walk, just walk everywhere on Dust2. From doors, he's going to run to top mid. Opportunity lost. Opportunity lost. Opportunity lost. Opportunity lost. I'm so sad still. Oh well, either way, Exo Bay. Um, how are they going to be doing? Oh, so they do save the, uh, the single AK, they c which means that they can actually get a buy in here because of course Semi it had more of an investment than the rest of his team. He cannot buy a gun. Everyone else can though. So AK can be dropped for the S Mr. Slemmy and we'll have to see whether or not uh, we shall get Exo Bay in a position where they can bounce back. Selfless still do not have an AWP and DSR of Exo Bay does. So I'll have to see uh, if he can get some nice peeks there or if he's going to be more of a passive or per for his team. Looks like he is going to go into mid instead of being that, uh, that manic car. And there's a big challenge coming in from Long. Can Exo Bay hold on here right now? Because the push is coming in fast. Relic's down into the pit position, able to claim the kill onto Slemmy. And all of a sudden, Exo Bay finds themselves, I mean, if not at the amount of disadvantage, in a four versus four, and they don't ha have any longer have long control, and so there's a lot of questions to be asked for Exo Bay right now. They're gonna have to play very reactively. With only one man in B, they can't really push B for info. It's very risky. I mean, they could try to do it, but no one's very far away from the tunnels. So perhaps even they should gamble towards the A bomb site, maybe with uh, with a few of their players. It is a tough position. Exo Bay are going to have to make a call. And uh, their man in mid could be hearing those guys moving up short right now as the challenge will likely come onto DSR, who's orping on the A bomb site. Let's see if DSR can make these uh, frags happen as these T's start to push. But they're actually going to hold just for a little bit longer before finally deciding to toss in the nades and make the play onto that A site. Oh, wow. Breeze once again catching people off guard. And as you can see now the rotation coming from Selfless. Now they don't like their the A attempt anymore. They're going to go straight in the upper tunnels, straight into the B bomb site. And no one who was sat in the B the entire round, he's just left. And now he cannot defend the B bomb site. 
Oh, mainline's position. Breeze is going to flank mainline. This is brilliant. How is Breeze always behind people? Will he see him in time, though? Or will, uh, will mainline be able to kill people first? That is a blind spot. Breeze might not even check this position. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there's so much damage on here. Oh, the oh no, I can't even talk English anymore. <laughs> so... At least I'll be some information that there's uh, two CTs, and look at that. Now it's the T's playing retake. This is really interesting. Nifty can always push through the door if a CT tries to defuse as well. That's a very powerful position, in fact. Indeed, the, the defuse is going to be attempted, so uh, just needs to be a double pick. There's so much time that's elapsed that uh, I don't think the CT is going to make it, and indeed they are not. Two to three in favor of Selfless. Exobay on around $3,000, and uh, Selfless not doing bad on the money despite losing a few plays in that round. Got the P90 coming out for the anti-eco now from Relics. And he's going to be headed towards the Uber going towards Rock. Perhaps he had a good support and he seems to be committed. Not seeing anything there. He may choose to hold the angle, although might have to be li might have to be a little weary that perhaps the CT has gone past already, but uh and ducking and diving while his team start harassing the B-bomb site. In fact, Exobay not really on A or B at the moment. They are on shorts, having a bit of a push. But then there's two towards B now, so Exobay is starting to get spread out a little bit thin. Yeah, it's kind of strange there because we actually saw a situation where the T's are basically pushing into the uh, into the, the tunnels right next to the B-bomb site, into that entrance, kind of taking a, a battle with the pistoling players and then kind of backing away, almost as if they're like looking for the picks in a situation where... They could just they could just try to get everybody in there, and then they would just take the bomb site over. But they seem very reluctant, and then then they bring everyone there, giving time for the CT to rotate, and then th then they go to the other side of the s of the uh, of the map. So it does seem like selfless are a little bit uh, a bit wary, a bit hesitant to actually try to commit with a play, and uh, but finally they take long control. This is such an easy, easy way to handle a round like this. But there's so many CTs converging on middle, and all the, and the two players there, they're just going to get sandwiched and crushed. And that's two rifles now. And the bomb has not been planted yet, so there is a possibility, a real possibility, that Exo Bay could actually pull this round out of the bag, because they're going to split on A now themselves. This is a little bit crazy. Which way is it going to go? Mitch playing Goose, but he won't want the uh, CT to get that close. Oh, and if he gets thinking, he's got an AWP in the pit. If this goes down, then who knows what's going to happen. Holding passive angles, trying to waste time here. With the scope, surely that's not going to work out for him. No, it's not. Of course it's not. So, CT there, Slemmy, is going to uh, be alive for now. Is he going to go for the AWP? He is in the pit, but obviously he's not going to get a defuse in this situation. But he's made some money for his team. And it's another expensive round for Selfless as well. Indeed, indeed it was. And, y and you, uh, you can just uh, basically throw it on the fact that they were a bit hesitant and they didn't just didn't just group up with some nades and just take over a position. Um, again, long is good for that. B, th I mean, these are actually the two uh, anti-phosphite locations that people will do, is just nades, have some set, have some set nades into the A long area or into the B bomb site as you're running, and just flash, flash the hell out of everything, and just use that superior weapon advantage. And even if they stack, it would be really good. Um, but definitely, Selfless perhaps wanted a bit too easy around. They wanted to be given a pick first, and that's when things could get dangerous. Against those pistols, just takes that one deagle shot, and then all of a sudden you have four players, and you're like, um, now I'm very scared. But uh, now it's kind of looking like a, a default here from both teams. We've got two men on B early on an early timing for the CT side. Three men on long for an early timing on the CT side. Very, very standard stuff. The usual variation here is that uh, if your team CT, if you have a CT offer towards A, usually it's going to get car. But we're actually going to get two players towards catwalk here and if he gets hit towards the middle. So now the CTs have some decisions to make, James, because they don't know if it's going to be a B split, but they're very afraid of that right now. Yeah, the breeze started to push long to get some information, but Relics is still outside harassing him. Slemmy though is pushed towards the short. He's seeing players in the uh, lower tunnel there, trying to get a bit of action in, but no damage done to any of the T's just yet. And there are two CT's down now. The B-bomb site's been lost, and surely X Obey will have to go for the save in this situation. Relics has been lurking, stopping rotation for the entire time. He's currently in mid, doing the same, and it seems that uh, X Obey, the remaining players, may be up for a bit of harassment towards the end of this round. Yeah, the interesting thing there from Selfless is that a lot of teams, when you get that mid-pick, 
they're probably they're probably thinking, okay, we're gonna actually just maybe even leave just one guy in dark. Maybe with the bomb. That's usually what people do because that's kind of safer to lose the bomb, let's say in upper dark, than it is losing it when your guys are pushing in middle. Um, or maybe maxing two players, and then we'll split from middle into that B bomb site. But uh, selfless actually rotated everybody into upper dark to push B. Most teams don't actually take that approach, and I wonder if that's going to be a consistent response, or if they just have that variation. Um, so they did not like this one time. And they are going to be able to remove most of the weapons here from the saving CTs. Only one out of three will survive. So this this is interesting now. Um, Selfless looking to be quite dominant in this first half. They they keep crushing the economy of the CTs. And uh, the double op didn't really work too well for Exo Bay. And now they're on three famas, limited nades, and only a single op on DSR. DSR still needs to bring the results uh, for his side right now. So it's going to be a fast push into long from the selfless side. And Exo Bay were trying to contend for it, but they have immediately run back to the A site. They don't really have the nade to continue to counter flash the T's. So mainline Mitch and Relics in the back will take control of the uh, long area. I'm going to leave Mitch in the pit. And uh, well, he's got an AK actually. They're not even taking one of the orbs towards the pit. So the rest of the team are going to spread out and decide what to do. In fact, Nifty's been watching B this entire time with his big green gun to make sure there's no push in response, or if there is, that there is a punish for it. Breeze's position, actually, um, just a nerd fact, if you stand there on the balcony like that, your, your shadow is shown on a slope. Obviously, the CTs are in control of it for the time being, but in uh, situations where there are less people on both sides, that can be some information for you, that you would see his shadow on the floor where the sun begins in the corner. And what one thing right now is, and this is actually something that Nifty, uh, who's got orping and T spawn still, is looking out for, is that this kind of timing is when the CTs ha they haven't seen anything for so long, and they have limited or they have worse equipment. They should, they probably should have taken a risk by pushing into into upper dark. Uh, instead, what they're doing right now is abandoning A completely. Will they just go for the save, or are they actually trying to play five retake? Because if they want to play five retake. Right now is the time when they already need to have outside longhouse control. But now they're going to have to try to take it, it against Nifty. Because they don't know what's there yet. That's the problem. That's the scary part. But they're going to barrel in. They're going to completely ignore long, actually. They're going to barrel up catwalk. This is definitely uh, a little bit unconventional and certainly it's going to be with its sh uh, fair share of risks. But if they can just hit these shots, they're going to be fine. But so far, it's Uber to take the first kill and the second one as well. Single handedly able to defend the site with the triple now. And finally, he'll get a little bit of help. But that round from Exo Bay was was um, definitely pretty pretty rough, I think. Because I mean, if you're going to go for that that five man retake, you really need to split on it, split split with uh, with Long. Um. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think the likelihood of winning that was low, <laughs> mm. all things considered. And it wouldn't be that wouldn't have been the first round where I would have seen a, a bomb explosion win and 10 people alive this week, in fact. So I think that the call was there to be made in that situation. And, um, oh, there was something else I wanted to say, but I have... But oh, it was unfortunate for, um, I think it was it Relics who was on shorts that the player... I think Uber was on the site and Relics was on shorts, but Uber had no flashbangs. So he, he was unable to flash, because if he throws a flash there, that's a god tier flash. Yep. And uh, two easy kills, and then the three Obey players save. So it was unlucky for, for Obey in, in some mm. ways that Selfless didn't have a flashbang to kill the two Obey players on short. And this is the thing, by the way, let's not forget that you can throw grenades now from short into long. So if, if, uh, if they did want to go for that retake, and they were trying to do the, the sensible thing and get people in long, then you can f they, the guys can help you from uh, catwalk, flash over, and if, and people would likely still not expect those flashes, so the long players would likely get blinded. You can get some, you hopefully get a, an easy kill or two, and then get in there for the split. But the other problem as well for Exo Bay is that it went down to 40 seconds, and they uh, and they still didn't have any inf information. They still had a two-man setup in in uh, B, and they still didn't go for any kind of uh, pot flash into upper dock to see if there was anyone even there, and. Uh, Preemptive rotation is, is quite, can be quite important. You want to get ahead, if you could possibly can, with that information so you can make those rotations and have a stronger defense. But, uh, well, it's not going so well for them, is it? 7-2 is uh, the scoreline for Selfless. And finally, we're going to see DSR maybe hit some shots up middle, James. 
That is a good opening frag from the C2, so are trailing by five rounds at the moment. You can see, uh, you can't see it, but you can see the selfless coach talking to his dead teammate in the game. So it is uh, AWP Central at the moment. It's AWP India, that. Indeed. Except all the ops are on one side of the map, unfortunately, for the CTs. So B has been abandoned for the time being. Relics is just going to bide his time there. But Ape has moved over towards the uh, mid area to join his teammate. But we'll have to quickly rotate because of the suggestion implied by that smoke grenade. Offlash coming in to allow Mitch to get the headshot. Could have gone either way though, but the AK will be to the advantage there as Mitch got dinked as well, down to 9 HP. Now Ape has gone back to the mid area and this time he will lose B. So uh, Exo Bay being stretched from, or pulled in rather, to, from pillar to pose. And now they find themselves outside of the bomb site with the man disadvantage quickly evened up. They've got a bit of time to try and get an early advantage here, but they may be running to their doom. Are they committed? That is the question. Yeah, this is a tough one. There's no doubt about it. And uh, the lack of grenades is going to be quite painful, but they're going to give it a go. There's relics by the big box. It's a pretty strong position. Let's see if he can play this right. He might just catch the players in the back, and he is... Uh, He's the only healthy player right now for his team, and this is a little bit scary right now. Freeze is alive, but he will quickly go down with a good peek there from Relics. Now, Selfless, they, at the moment, they do just look stronger than Exo Bay, just, just, generally, just generally all around the board. And I, I do wonder if Exo Bay, you know, will see them be much better enabled on the T side. I do believe that they could get a lot of rounds on their T side, but I don't think, I don't think that they can recover from the deficit that is building right now, which I think is probably going to be something like an 11 or 12 12 uh, situation here for selfless. So, um, was this a selfless pick? Uh, no, it was XO Bay, I think. It was, XO it was a Bay, pick, a Bay yeah. pick, interesting. So, they could potentially win each other's maps then. They did example. choose this. <coughs> well, we will see what happens. So, is this a tactical pause or is this a technical pause? We will find out. I hope it's a tactical, it's a tactical yeah. pause. Yeah, I mean, they, they have the money for the buy. They have around $4,000 each. So they can go for a buy without any helmets. They're up against four AKs and an AWP, so that's entirely doable for them. But, I mean, what do you think is... Go apart from the uh, the kind of unusual responses to the... With with regards to their approach to A, what do you think Exo Bay needs to do, if anything, here to Well, there's been, there's, there's been a lot of spots where it's everything looks fine until the players... On the on the defense, just don't hit their shots. Mm -hmm. I mean, because because they've been playing somewhat of a passive style, which is completely fine. Like I don't think they're playing particularly wrong. I think apart from you know some spots here and there, but you you got to be able to hit your shots. This is why I said I feels like Selfless is just playing better right now with more comfort. They're playing DSR um, in mid a little bit, but he's not he's not really getting much in the way of picks, and he's getting pretty easily uh, disabled by a lot of the the smokes. And and uh, I mean Selfless are just playing some pretty good defaults. They're actually getting themselves into good positions. And they're not really doing making any big mistakes. The thing is, um, Exo Bay they could they could try to mix it up a little bit. Um, one thing we haven't seen from them is any catwalk aggression, which is actually usually the go-to, especially um, in in NA uh, CS. Something that I've seen all the, you know quite often actually from certain teams. Like Sean Gez used to always run that strat, uh, very variations of uh, of cat aggression, and that that could be a nice little mix up there. But uh, but yeah, they need to start finding finding some in individual plays as well. That's the biggest thing I'd say. Well, the game is going to resume soon, so we'll see what kind of difference uh, Exo Bay can make in this run. But also the question is, again, we saw when we saw a tactical timeout in the previous map, we saw rushes th uh, into A from the Ts and into B from the CTs. So I do wonder if we're going to see some fast aggression somewhere from the Ts as well to try and counter any funky stuff that the uh, CTs might be doing, like a, a cat push or something like that. Yeah, I mean, um, oh, cat push is, is, always, is always a good one. And uh, yeah, as you're saying, you know, we're going to see whatever the plan is. We'll see it in the following round. Um, but one thing I think that could be quite cool, actually, is if they if they go with the um, if they know how to well, if you put the HG in middle instead of a smoke, because you do want to hold onto the smokes um, as much as possible. But you obscure vision and then maybe cross actually f like three or, um, or four players towards the B side and go okay. for the push in the dark. <coughs> That's a fast play from the team after all to try and. Uh alleviate any would-be problems from the CTs. The short plant comes in. Three CTs remain, two of which are in mid, but nifty. 
I have something to say about this position, actually. This position, like, I, for example, used to hold that position with an AWP to stop rotators jumping on the Xbox. But before they updated the hitboxes in the game, it was like 70% of the time, if you shot somebody in the back when they were jumping on the Xbox, it would not register. But now it does. That, that for me, was, was one of the, uh, the biggest changes. What well, the hitbox is actually representing what the what the guys exactly yeah, yeah that, that's obviously yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. It, so was it was never like that it could ever not be on that. The difference. difference was enormous. We do have enormous. we do have um, we do have a Noah stack here in middle, and we have also the uh, catwalk aggression coming in from DSR, and it's going to be working out here for for ape and DSR. So they're going to pick up the aggressive kills with that cat boost and some supporting aggression uh, close in middle doors to to make sure that cat player can get somebody to work with. And now they're going to move back into passive setups. So they've given themselves the early round advantage to at least win this round. Obviously, th th this kind of stuff, you know, you don't want to make it predictable because then it's exploitable. So they can't rely on this every round, but uh, they have the advantage now. Problem for them could be is if they just lose these paddles on long because this is this is selfless. If they do actually go for this, this is actually the, obviously the best uh, best shout for them is to go together on long and just try to win these battles really fast. Because let's look at the rotation. It's insanely far for the B players to rotate. Oh, and there's a fast frag. This is really bad news right now. DSR needs to slow them down massively. He's got no... S oh, he's, oh, he does have a smoke to do so. So they should be okay here. Self is still not committing, actually, to the uh, to the A play. DSR pulling completely out of position there. I don't know that they have the personnel to make such a play like this they i think they need to commit to the a site because yeah, the long the longer and unbeknownst to them there is a two-man push in the low tunnel and the longer that they uh, take to make it onto a the more difficult it's going to be for them to win the round the bomb punk comes in for the double strike that will allow uh, an orpa to defend the bomb from the platform area exactly where relics are standing with the orp funnily enough need a bit more height to get there and look at these nades flying in from Exo Bay, not quite getting to Goose, but I'm pretty sure they will know that they need to look for it. Pop flashes as well, and they have the man advantage. So, how many can Mitch take down with him? Only the one, but uh, Relics, oh, he's missed a shot there, but they know the AWP is in play. Missed another shot. He's still got a player in support, and that's Uber, who's going to take one play down, but the defuse will come in. Uber gets taken down. Relics had uh, so many shots towards the site, but perhaps trying to take them as fast as he could without getting picked. He missed quite a few. Yeah, that was really interesting um, from Exo Bay as well because th they played that really scared actually because DSR saw a couple of players on long and th there was uh, basically four of the CTs in middle but they were still so afraid to push up, to get into the straight away because they could get peaked out of position on mid. Anyway, um, we can maybe come back to that later on. We have Again, these standards set up here from Exo Bay, and typically, you know, your Opa DSR is actually peeking the double doors on Longhouse right now. He would fall back to Car, and uh, you would get a kind of a crossfire between Slemmy, who's gone to Goose, with a player from B, to make sure that if there is a B split, you can actually do something about it. Right now, this this play is really weak against a B split with what the uh, the uh, CTs are doing because the rotation is absolutely huge, and the only defense is going to be on the B site itself, and they're going to get split on from both locations, and they're going to both get eliminated immediately. That's the round over. This is the reason why you'll see the majority of uh, teams actually play the crossfire with the third player on A, and you hit they'll have a mid CT spawn. Um, that is that is the reason because around rounds like this, it can be that brutal. The more you know. It's such a good, that's, this round is such a good example of that, actually. Look at the hunt here from Selfless. They are all going for the CTs. <laughs> that is absolutely insane, Relics. What are you doing? What a nutty peek. I can't believe DSR didn't, didn't even pull the trigger. Well, Exo Bay uh, look, looks to be getting absolutely wrecked yeah. on Dust 2. They don't know what's going on right now. Selfless are playing well, very well indeed. By the way, um, one of those... No! That's, dude, that's Bardolf tier knifing right there. I will applaud you. I'll give you eight Bardolfs out of ten for that so one. So I want to I make an addition to the point that we made with that round, right? So one of the reasons why some teams try to ent do entry frag as T's into mid is to pick off the guy that I said should be in CT. Wait, 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 start again, start again, sorry. Like so, so the last one I said was a good yeah. example yeah. of if you put the, the third player on A instead of on CT, you, you can't play crossfire or defend middle at all against the B split. 
right? As, as oh, like if, if you abandon a uh, uh, mid early, basically. One of the things, because usually you have three A long uh, at early timing and two in the B site at early timing, so you're safe against rush timings. Then the AWPA falls back to the car, you leave one guy in long on the A side, and then that third guy, who often can play the site or go catwalk, you, you usually uh, top teams will put him in CT, which gives the option for one of the two B players to play crossfire and control middle, control traffic in middle. Okay. Uh, right? So that's usually what happens, so that you don't get wrecked by the B split, or you have time to try to delay it or get some frags before it happens, so you can retake. Because obviously what we saw was they had no knowledge, and then, then the B guys get split on and instantly die, and the rotation so far, there's no way that it could, they can ever retake. So why a lot of T teams will actually entry frag into middle is to kill one of those two players, then they fall back, then they know they can play five against two on the A site, and the B players have a super huge rotation, and they can never play for information because it's too risky to not to play outside. So that's, that's, that's some D2 things that you'll commonly see in... Uh, in Europe, at least. Nice. But uh, some basics there. Two-man push here on short from the CT. And they have uh, Relix's face in the palm of their hand. And Ape is coming in with a P90 as well. So a bit of extra damage here. But we are down to a, a, well, that's a nice flashbang from the CTs to allow no one to get that kill onto Uber. So we have the bomb on the cusp of the B bomb site with three CTs in there. He is not trying to flip the last two and nice. the CT will. So uh, four rounds for X Obey versus the 11 of Selfless. I think this was one of the rounds where we really actually saw X Obey really hitting their shots on the defense. Because there's been a lot of rounds when there's been some rounds when uh, Selfless would just go for plays like this and they would just win the entries. And it sh it should more consistently, I think, it should more consistently look like the round we just saw there, where the CTs actually they connect those, you know, they kill those first two players, and then okay, sure, maybe there can be like a big individual player, uh, big individual play out of the the two remaining T's, but the number of advantages of the CTs will kind of overwhelm it. Maybe it's a scrappy round, but the CTs should still win. Um, usually in these rounds, we've seen selfish kind of wreck them, but it's the first time we saw how in how it should go, which is XOB winning the round. So. so we might have a little bit of a delay because no one is changing no one is changing his internet connection and it seems it might take him a little while to uh, sort out his new one. So I think we might have to go to a break while no one repairs his while no one repairs his internet. Um, so bear with us guys, we will wait. We'll give him a few minutes to sort out whatever issue he's having. We will be back here in just a few minutes with the uh, second half of Dust 2, the second map in this best of five.
Hello, Welcome back. So, no one has uh, fixed his internet. And we continue. Pissed around on a second half. Selfless are seven rounds up over Exo Bay at present. We will see if they can retain such a lead. Nifty has pushed double doors, it appears. And uh, we almost have a double peek here. Oh, I'm going to take it straight in the face, actually. Hechi coming in. We'll do 40 onto Slemmy. He is a nade man for his team, so he is an important one. Actually, no, that was DSR down there, so he hasn't taken much damage at all. Slemmy must have got shot elsewhere. My main line is still aggressive towards short, and DSR may be coming to meet him soon. Meanwhile, we have a three-man push of long, so the split is real. Yep, it is coming, and the CT is trying to play the ranges, except for uh, one man. Mainline is trying to get in in the faces of his players with that PT-1000. He's doing so successfully. It's actually cut off one head of this push, and it's going to be Uber cutting off heads as well with the USP. It's looking pretty strong right now here for the CTs, despite being an even situation. They still must get to the bomb site, these Ts, and they are, are going to be hopping over, and all of a sudden, wow! I mean, that's, they're the pistol rounds for you. They can, they can just do that. These guys are winning. These guys are winning. No, now they've lost. That is a pistol round, potentially in CSGO. So, 11-5. Um, we'll see, uh, hopefully, not a force buy out of Selfless. Because the force buys on this map are incredibly futile. Oh. They are futile. They're terrible on the CT side. This is probably the hardest map to to win a force buy on as a CT in this situation. And I ha they haven't gone for it, which I'm happy for, because it's also one of the maps where you want orbs as fast as possible and uh, so on. So, so they will be able to save their money to do so. And uh, passive play from DTs. They may get a bit of surprise here. A lot of CTs coming in through the uh, long doors, and they are starting to assault these defensive players in T-Spawner and Exo Bay. They are a little bit too spread out here. Definitely at risk, some of these players. But, of course, the superior weaponry is definitely giving them an edge in these battles. But that's a lot of players to lose those two and potentially a third on Ape. He is just cowering at the moment in the uh, uh, lower dark area. Mainline, he's waiting so patiently for his prey. But where will he find the kill? We have to see that deck jumping through and somehow does pick up a kill. That's kind of ridiculous. I don't think he'll be good for another one, but to be honest, actually, if he can just even save a UMP and a CZ, that would have been really nice. I actually think that would have been uh, the, the best play there because he could uh, drop those in the next round. To his I mean, they're not going to buy in the next round. He could drop them to his teammates and they, they would have, you know, a couple, a couple more weapons to spread out some damage in this round because obviously, you know, that their equipment here is going to also be very bad. Um, but never mind. We're going to see a couple of CZs and a few more pistols. Maybe up again with the usual shenanigans trying to get some kills. It's an eco round, it's an eco round. It's still an eco round. <coughs> Three people were towards long. Mainline was holding um, a flash. If they had anybody to meet and greet over there, he brought some cake along, but there was no meet and greet to be had, so the cake will remain with mainline, aka the flashbang. Breeze is over towards short. We've got uh, two players poking towards B, where Mitch is alone, but mainline and Nifty are in position for a quick rotation. So selfless are uh, basically they have three players close to the mid door, so they can be quite dynamic with the poverty buy that they have. Your pistols on a flank through lower tunnel, on a flank through shorts. Relix has chosen to show himself and he has taken Slemmy's head to use on his mantelpiece next to a picture of his sons and daughters. Mitch and Uber are probably soon to fall. They're waiting to die, Dan. There is a song by 07 called Waiting to Die. And I think the chorus goes, la 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 la, La 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 la, la 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 la, because I'm waiting to die. It's actually a very pretty song. I believe Sia sings in it. And the echo is done. Back to the business. Seven round, uh, sorry, four round deficit for X Obey, who have the AWP onto DSR. There's an AWP onto Nifty as well. And uh, again, we have Selfless abandoning the uh, mid area, but Mainline is going to pop back sooner rather than later. 
So Exo Bay going into a default, just clearing lower tunnel, upper tunnel, making sure there's no push here from the CTs, and one would expect them to clear uh, short at some point. And there's that crossfire that you may have been talking about previously, mainline in CT, Mitch on B slope with Nifty holding the AWP around car. That was indeed more or less exactly what I was uh, sort of uh, talking about. And we're going to have uh, T's pressing into this now, and you can see it is actually going to be uh, some trading backwards and forwards. So there you go, Exo Bay. They, they won't have an easy, as easy of an avatar, as easy of a time as Selfless Avatar in picking up that uh, B split. So now they have to think, go back to the drawing board, get out the uh, get out the chalk. And uh, concoct some kind of scheme. What kind of scheme would you like to see them concoct, James? In this situation, taking too long. It's 25 seconds, James. Come on, please. Time for the essence. And Slammy's dead now. You've got two people to work with, and there's still, there's still no plan for you, James. I would, I would try and take too long. Take too long with three men. And but you've uh, got two men now. <laughs> yeah, well, I would have taken it with three men. With three men. Oh, we do now. And then uh, smoking the site. Smoke, smoking the site. Smoke. I would have smoked the site, man. Smoking it. No, I would have thrown the smoke. Well, I, either I would have done one of, one of two things, I think, based on the positions they had. Actually, let's just see if no one can clutch this. He's, he's got, got four, four seconds. seconds. He's, he's not going to clutch it, Dan. <laughs> he's not going to clutch it. It would be epic. He would need a wall bang through the box. And uh, <laughs> never mind that guy. Okay. So I would have either gone for a long take or a uh, short push with a smoke on the site because the orb is probably going to be there. Either the orb is going to be on the site or the car, right? And you have one smoke, so you either throw it on the site and try and plant for short and it's like a desperation run, or you do the fanatic, fanatic smoke to the top of um, the A slope. Fun fact, you can execute A with a wall of smokes with just three players. Most people don't know how to do that, which is interesting. NIP used to do it, and they were badasses back in those days. But... Uh, that was actually when they, they won our first season finals, I think, with uh, with plays like that. I think you meant to say that, that they can do a set play. I did mean to say that. Say it's, 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 it's We're not doing well today, are we? Seesaw. We're not doing she, well today. She sells seashells on the seashore, James. She probably doesn't make much money. Because you can just pick up the seashells. Not from her trade, as she said, but I mean, from the sea. Two-man long hold here for the CTs. Again, Obey are just creeping up. I mean, if their team name's literally going to be called Exobay, can't we just call him Obey? So that smoke you saw being lined up there is for CT spawn. Well, the way I used to line it up was the corner of the uh, smoke grenade would be facing... That's uh, same smoke, but just a different way, basically. That's a... Is that a good smoke? It doesn't look <laughs> like it. It looks like it's quite uh, quite over to one side. It's wonky, ah, James. So it's, they're using it for the B split rather than the A push. I like it. Not. And only Relics is going towards A. He's surely going to get absolutely wrecked. Indeed, he is. And and there's the GG. And that's that's the thing with those th those B splits. This is why they're so scary. Sometimes if you just get the fast, if you're able to get out fast, it's it is the GG. So, um, if I remember correctly, you are supposed to line up the top left corner of the smoke grenades with the corner of the window, where the, where the window starts to touch the kind of ledge, if you will, of on the side of the stairs you walk up. And then it bounces in the middle as opposed to on the far left, presumably leaving a gap. But I have a question for you, James. Yes, Dan. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck for woodchuck? Could chuck wood. Well, it depends. Uh, it depends on the measurement of time, Dan. How much time does the wood chuck have to, to chuck wood? I mean, that's the first thing. And where, where is, where is it? Like, if it's, well, if it it's depends, on, depends on the season. It depends on where the woodchuck is. For example, if the woodchuck is in an adventure playground in the UK, Dan, then there are lots of tiny pieces of bark which are technically wood. So, if it felt like chucking those, it could probably chuck a, a fair few of those, Dan. So the question is. How, how long would it take for the woodchuck to be fatigued? How much time does it have to chuck the wood? And shut up. And does he ha <laughs> care about the risk of potentially also throwing, throwing children around? Because children like to play in those things, man. 
Oh, well, Woodchuck is not bigger than a child. There's a two-man push here from the CTs, from Selfless. They only have two rifles, but Mitch and Uber are coming in hard with the big guns, the cold steel down, the barrels. Are they really, though? Well, because nothing's, nothing's happening currently, Jay. They're standing <laughs> there, Currently, Dan. right now. I set it up. <laughs> no I one is. Up, I set up the carnage. That's my job, all right? It's not my job to actually get the frags. At least on the face it. I'll see you on lap. All right. All right. Okay, well, they're doing something now. Put that on the aim on. Get the spit on. And uh, stuff is actually rotating. Where's the orb? There it is. Well, actually, no. Where is Nifty? Yeah, he is. He is there. But he's going to get uh, assaulted from short. They're getting caught from two sides. But the frags are actually happening right now for the CTs. They had poor equipment. They're impoverished, James. However, sometimes the impoverished ones are the ones you expect nothing from. But you must what? look out for them. I but don't know. But you must what? Look out for them. Why? Because they got knives? Because they'll shoot you in the face. Evidence in this round. And we actually will see they're going to try to take over long again. But the challenge is definitely going to be difficult up against DSR on the angle. Trey comes in. And DSR is still... Uh, well, he's, well, he's quite dead, actually. But, uh, <laughs> but Uber is <laughs> he's trying to hold the... Uh, he's, he's bringing forth the torch. He's carrying the torch. And he's trying to get some extra kills here on towards the site. But these T is obviously not going to peek him. And he cannot he cannot push all the way onto the bomb Let's site. Let's have a look at the T's. I would like to see... Oh, no, it's too late now. They're running away. It's too late. I was curious as to the setup that was on the site with the T's. How they were exactly holding to not want to peek whatsoever. Just wanted to see, but there we go. But the damage uh, done there by Selfless was actually quite astronomical. They managed to kill a lot of players despite having... Uh, very limited equipment, so and also keeping me up alive t uh, into the next round. So that's actually a very, very annoying thing for Exo Bay um, going to into their next round. They will have full equipment though, will Exo Bay, but uh, their money's going to be a little bit stra strange at the moment. In fact, they don't have much money, but it's okay. DSL is going to take down one of the orphans straight away, and the quick push comes into B, and this is exactly what I wanted to see because we're not seeing enough of these fast plays for the anti force buys, but obviously. In getting that pick on the cross, that incentivize them to just run into the beast bomb site. So, simple stuff right there. And it does look like uh, Exo Bay are on the uh, comeback trail right now. Um, selfless are going to be able to buy in the next round, but um, I'm quite curious as w as to what else is in the repertoire of Exo Bay on this map on the T side, because they're definitely having a much better time of it. Because if you looked at them on CT, they looked a bit lost, but. Uh, I can't believe this is still map two, James. <laughs> we've been we've been casting this series for ages. We have indeed, Dan. It's best of five. Yeah, we have. And we've been going for almost three hours. So there are <laughs> three <laughs> AWPs on the map at the moment. Two of which are with the CT side. You can see that the grenades start to be limited. Ooh, I like the uh, boost onto blue. Can we have a look at that player? Because I want to see his angle. Who is that? Ah, uh, okay. I I haven't been on this for so long in that direction that I forgot if he could see through the door or not. But obviously he can see it, but not all the way to the other door. I'm nerding out. Please excuse me. DSR's holding an angle towards short in case there are any pushes, but there's nobody towards short for the time being. Mainline is holding the alternate angle through the uh, double doors, which can catch people out if they start walking across mid from the lower tunnel. Can get an unsurprising, uh, sorry, a surprising AWP to the chest. But these players will, of course, know that. With Uber's position, he should hear some of these T's moving around on long. Great alarm for his teammate. Got a nice kill through the door as well there, but uh, long has been lost as far as the CTs know. Bree's not pushing, though, because he doesn't know if there's a second player there. In many rounds, there have been two people towards long. And look at the aggression from Nifty. Assuming that long has been lost, he's going to try and stop the push. But he's done some good damage, but not enough. Breeze now has taken over this position on a um, mid. And the great wide peak for the second player will be traded by the third, though. But he's done his job, and it's now down to a two versus two. Yeah, this is going to be interesting with two orbs on the retake. I wonder if they're going to find some guns to, uh, to help them out here, because... Sniper rifle is not really the best retake weapon in the world. Go though, no one with a very sick off angle there by Gandalf. Take down one player, just leaving mainline, and mainline is going to get the hell out of there. So uh, Exo Bay managing to steal away the A bomb side. 
and they're going to claim another round here. And <laughs> no one spinning around there on the drop, able to get the frag as well. No survivors here for the CT side, and they will be forced to another eco. They will be able to afford a few weapons. They've lost many, many rounds in a row now. The full four, four rounds, have been lost in a row. And uh, Exo Bay won away from tying the game up now. Exo Bay did win map one, didn't they? They did, right? It's a long time ago. Though. They did. They did indeed. Thank you, Producer Reese. Producer Reese, uh, uh, ever on the ball. Nades! Oh, I didn't do anything, actually. They all ran away. I love it when people run into a HE. Although the funniest thing I saw was um, somebody tried to jump off short platform onto a slope and get hit in the chest by a Molotov and then shot. It was hilarious. But completely irrelevant to this round, Dan. Um, we've got four people. Bring this map up again. Oh, they're creeping into B, in fact. They're creeping into B. They're creeping into B, Dan. DSR's looking around the smoke and they're creeping into B. <laughs> Sounds like a, a, this would be a good song. You see Relic's turn there because he heard the jump. On in 1.6, if you were standing on the car, you could pinpoint exactly where somebody was in the tunnel, just by uh, pointing yeah, one yeah. of your ears in that direction. You always knew exactly where they were. It was great. Yeah, and you could wallbang the hell out of everything there. Those were good times. Yeah, um, I love listening there. They have. There's been no no more creeping into V though, James. So false advertisement once again. Get Indeed. a short push. 35 seconds left. They're going to rush the site. Three people deep into B. Selfless. If they lose the A site here, are they going to go on to save? Uber has no intention of losing this. Are they going to go on to save? They're on the eco, Dan. I would say that. Oh, oh, this is disgusting. How many more can he get? Another tag. There are two plays. He could kill everyone here. He could kill everyone. Dan. Jump, jump. There we go. There's three. Uber, can he get the last? No. <laughs> he has done. What just happened? Why would you. What, James, why would you use grenades to limit the advantages of your opponent, James? Why, because why you want to lose the round, Dan. Why, why would you um, Why would you not just run out one by one against a single man with a scout? Because it's too easy, Dan. That would mean winning the round. I mean, there's no reason to, to definitely not to smoke in front of him and then throw a flash and then drop a man down to charge him whilst you storm the site, whilst he can't see. Definitely no reason to do that. Anyway, uh, Exo Bay, who had a decisive advantage in, in this comeback trail, throw it all away against that scout. That is an appalling way for them to lose that That's round. And they are going to feel horrible about that one. They have to, they have to put it past him, though. They, I can't. they do, they do. I can't, because I bore witness to it and had to commentate over it, Dan. But they have to put it past them, because if they don't, then they may lose this best of five in one round, then to a scout. We all, all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. We must live with them forever and ever. And they've been immortalized now on tape. I, I well. made a mistake once. Okay, so it's they're going to try to get themselves into the B split. Pretty standard. No, no messing about. No trying to force location. Just, they're just going in for it and trying to get the uh, shots hit. And so far, actually, it's, it's working out. This could end up helping them because obviously they'll reset the economy if they, of the opponents if they win this round. Selfless might have just only one buy left in them. And it might not be the best buy in the world. So Self is probably considering just a full save right now. And I think that's exactly what they're going to try to do. And uh, I, I, yeah, their money is absolutely completely screwed. Selfless do not have any money. They must keep these weapons alive. And to be honest, if, if I were uh, on XO Bay, I would definitely try to send a couple, like, two players to, I would invest at least two players in trying to get some frags here. Because if they're able to eliminate one or two weapons, there is no buy in the next round for Selfless. That is 12, that is 13, 13 then. Essentially, in theory, that should be 13 13, easy, smooth sailing. But it does not look like they are going to make it in time. It looks like they're more concerned with, with keeping their own weapons alive right now. So, uh, selfless can force it up in the next round if they want to do so. But will they do it? Will they do it? Looks like they are not. Yes, they are going yes or no to do it. Come on, they are going one. to do it. They are forcing it up. They managed to kind of uh, eke out an AWP there. Um, with an oop, with three rifles, they also saved. So they're going to give themselves a chance in this one. But they are broke right now. Like so Bay, they, can, they could actually use this as a kind of... They could you know, kind of pole vault themselves forwards to maybe a map victory if they were to win this round. Look at that smoke. There must be a way to 
Why, why hasn't three clicks Philip done a video that shows how you make a smoke go above a Molotov like that? Huh? Where's that video? CT's pushing into the B halls now, but no one is waiting for them, and they have fallen to no one, Dan. CT just rides to no one. And Flemmy. So that should be an open B bomb site uh, in most cases. Extra Bay are going to charge straight in, and again, Selfless are in a situation where they are on the wrong side of the map. But perhaps they have waited too long. That, that uh, kill actually may change the decision between save and push down to a three versus three. But again, they have no map control. Mainline's got a long rotation into the B halls where Ape will be waiting for him. We were trying to get the high ground. I think that Molotov will go, will go behind the red box, which you can uh, get headshots through the window in. I'll go into that a bit later on, but the jewels are being won by the CTs now, leaving DSR alone. He's made it one versus one. How much time is there? Orp versus Orp. Is DSR a believer in the uh, fake defuse? Oh, surely he hasn't got time to stay alive, DSR, and this round is yours. I think he's done his job. Nifty is going to make it out alive, however. Nifty pick, picking up four kills there as well. So it looks like we're going to get a tactical pause in as well. And you know what's really interesting? No, is that I don't know what's tactical interesting. Pause is gonna be, honey and it's going to be selfless saying, guys, every time they go B, we lose. We lose. <laughs> that's, what, that's what tactical pause is going to be. Guys. What about that B? <laughs> What's going on over there? Ah, so what I, wanna, what I wanted to talk about was the fact that the one of the CTs threw the Molotov off the wall behind the red box because if you stand on the stairs behind that red box, you can look over the double stack into the uh, window where the CTs come in for the retake and you can see their head before they can see you. So uh, it's a really powerful spot. And obviously, it's a, it's a giant place to hide from as well, and you can shoulder peek the door. But again, mainly, um, you can go on the stairs behind the red box, and you can see over double stacks. So if a CT comes in, and you can see his head and shoot him in the head, and then your teammate on the site can focus on the door. That's often how the setup is done. People often throw HEs off the wall there to bounce behind that red box because there's always someone, al almost always somebody behind that, that red box. Another thing is uh, on a CT retake yesterday, we saw a smoke grenade dropped in front of the uh, headshot box to allow a CT to come in with an easier time from the tunnel, especially as there was a player on headshot with an AWP. It was perfect. It was mwah, mate. It was mwah. Anything else? Just, just going to finish there. I'm, I'm, I'm in quite a nerdy mood, actually. Yeah, that's, so I'm that's just nerding that, out. I'm giving you some space here. I'm nerding out, so I would like to... Because I have my own nerd nerdery that, that, is, that can be done, but I'm, I'm letting you take the floor, James. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm done for now. What was I going to make a video on, Dan? Because I know, if I, st if I start to say something, you're just going to interrupt me straight away. Go, 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 go. No, I'm, I'm I know this trap. I'm on down, I'm down time. I'm, I'm, I, don't, I have nothing to say right now. I have nothing to say right now. Go, go, <laughs> go, go. You definitely do. Go. The no, longer you wait, the worse. I don't trust you. I don't trust you. have to go. You have to go. The longer you wait, the more I'm going to stop. Why is the grenade down there? I actually have no idea. I didn't put it there. Did you? Of course not. I would never put it under the table. I would never remove it from the table either. Come on, nerd, please. At least put, put this back. We're in this rifle place. I want to draw on the map, though. Maybe we can do that some, some other time. Rinse around, Dan. Since you didn't nerd, you can nerd now or talk about the round. So you mean Count fast. Strike is being played. <sighs> right, right. All right, here we go. We got the uh, very fast. This actually. Just into the Beyond site, almost first stage yet. Into the Beyond site? <laughs> I didn't, definitely, definitely did not say that. Did I say into the Beyond site? Did I say that? You said Beyond Beyond site. <laughs> I thought you said I thought you said Beyond site. Okay. Into the Beyond site. Here we go. <laughs> I don't know what. So why, why don't you nerd Dan? Why don't you definitely nerd now? Now. No. Uh, oh come on. Just say what you wanted to see. Exo Bay are about to take the lead in this map. I thought we were going to 1-1, one, one, Dan, but perhaps we are going to 2-0. Selfless were looking so strong in the first half. Exo Bay are coming back with a strong T-side. Nifty almost takes down two, but he is going to get traded. Trading places, Dan. Trading guns. Trading nuns. Trading nuns? I don't know. Maybe tra trading cards with nuns? Tra trading nuns. The trading nuns. The first some trading nuns. Didn't know they were in back in town, James. Are Selfless going to win this? Nifty has AWP, but he's naked, Dan. He doesn't even have the PJ. He's used full birthday suit. He's got a smoke and an AWP. My prediction is 
effects so Vega be there will win this round. That seems to be the trend as an analyst. I must analyze and analyze the trends. And the trend is B and victory. But uh, we have an aggressive play in mid out middle and uh, Catwalk here. Massive investment from Selfless actually. So, so the round can be won and lost with this investment they've made because if they commit fully to this, then they are open to the trade frags. If the trade frags do not follow in their, in their uh, good graces, then, then the round will be over. But they have not committed fully, James. They've fallen back. They have uh, thought better of such, such a play. Selfless have nobody towards long because they have two towards short, but, well, they are pushing shorts, in fact. Uber and Mainline have seen that short is clear, but what can they make of long? Nifty is looking over towards long with the AWP, but he's also looking towards middle doors. So it seems he is split between two places, Dan, but now with uh, 50 seconds on the clock, he's starting to move towards long. Problem is, he can't go and peek all the way down long because he's got no armor. If he peeks and there are people there and they shoot him perhaps twice in the chest, he's probably dead, Dan. So the, the coolest thing about this is that XO Bay have exploited the fact that there was mid aggression. That's the smart. That's what the smart thing is because they saw that and they realized that if they're going for mid aggression like that, then they cannot have any defense on long, and they completely exploited this. So XO Bay have done the perfect counterplay. Now let's see if they can actually close out the round on top of that because where is the retake potential? If no one's going to get these kills, the retake potential is going to be slaughtered. But Nobody got those kills down because Relic's got the kill. He indeed he did. But the thing is, is that there's no one from from a long as well, so there's no split really here from the CT, so the, the retake attempt is going to be weaker, and there's four players here, two is stacked in Goose for XOB to defend this with, XOB looking really good, but it is Nifty to take the first pick, and then boom, they thought no one was there, but there is Reed with the spray down, there's three players out of the round, and now he's back into a one versus one, can Breeze do it again? Looks like the answer will be no. Oh, he's got no kit, Dan, he's got oh no kit, my Dan, God. he's got no kit. I thought he had a kit. He's got no kit, Dan. Oh my god. But that's that so sick, though. That was so cool because because most teams don't read the fact that when a team plays aggressively on catwalk, they have nobody in long. That is that is that means you should take long immediately. But the thing is, is that most um, it's hard for teams to on the fly to just as a unit be like, boom, this is the count, the immediate reaction to what we've seen. Usually you can make reactions to micro situations, but as a, from a macro perspective, you can't just get your entire team to do something immediately, but they somehow just did that. Don't know if it's coincidence or not, but that was smart. Well, here it comes again. Short push from two men, Nifty and Mainline. Since Nifty was uh, doesn't have the AWP, he doesn't need to be in CT spawn. So uh, this time they are not going to push, but play it aggressively. You can see Mainline is facing the wall in case his teammate Nifty gets flashed, so he can turn around and start mag sevening these fools but nobody is over towards mid for the time being. And uh, indeed, Exo Bay have been fairly good at getting that flash onto short, so perhaps they will meet the Mag-7 a bit later on. Slemmy's holding an angle towards long, and nobody is going to meet his angle for the time being. I do wonder if we're going to see uh, Mitch start to creep into the B-bomb site at some point. There the is one flash remaining on the uh, selfless team. They have, sorry, two flashes, but they have three smokes. There we go. Slimmy cruising along the floor. Along the floor? I don't know. <laughs> it sounds such a weird image that <laughs> him just sliding around on the floor. Well, you, if you've got one of those wheelie things that catches on fire, then you can cruise along the floor, I suppose. I mean, the, the things that they call ho hoverboards, they're just not hoverboards. Yeah, they're one of those. Because they things. have wheels. The push is coming in, Dan. The push is coming in, and no one is uh, about to meet someone, perhaps. Nope, someone's not going to meet someone. Or is he? Indeed, he is. So the push comes into the CT, but now they are really out of position. Uber needs to find loads of frags here. He has loads of things down for his team. Molotov's going through the smoke, but they're not going to find anything. That's a bad plant, Dan. Play it. It's, that is known as bad plant. So it's a five versus three retake for the CTs. And they should be good for the money here. Well, it's a two versus three now, and they don't have control of the site just yet. There is an AWP on the site. Is that good for the long pick? It doesn't seem so. DSR going to be up to the P250, but the guy's so far away. Finds a frag on too short now, but it's a one versus one. Oh. And the no scope will be enough for Exo Bay to take the second map. Uh, unsuspectedly, it was their pick, but Selfless. Selfless got, wow. uh, I don't know how many rounds in a row. Producer is a bit too fast there. Let me take my laptop off the table, please. So that's a 2 0. That was pretty. That, uh, that was actually a great Dust 2 game from many perspectives. From the perspective that I think we saw you know, clear strategies from teams, but 
I think it's that second half from uh, Exo Bay. They did a lot of really cool stuff where they just legitimately just straight up countered their opponent. And actually, it, it wasn't just like, oh, you know, this is the map's weak or something. Like, we, you know, we saw spots like there where they, they realized that they were pl uh, the CTs were playing more aggressively towards Catwalk. So they countered it completely by just taking long immediately. And, and by doing that, they get the site immediately. And then what's going to happen on the retake? Well, I mean, there were some good efforts because Selfless have some r really good skills on their players, but it's still very unfavorable. So that was an impressive, impressive uh, um, comeback from. Yeah, I did XLA. not expect that comeback. I think on Selfless's T side, they won, I think, ten rounds in a row. Yeah, they they looked really good. Knife. I mean, I I did say at the uh, during the the first half that I feel like Exo Base T side would be really good. But I felt like it wouldn't be good enough to recover, like against an eleven-round deficit. But they, that's exactly what they did. So, so props to them. Um, props to them indeed. Yeah, that was a supreme comeback from Exo Bay. The no scope at the end here from DSR, showing why we enjoyed his play yesterday. Very good stuff by him. So that's game uh, map two and game two, I suppose, out of the way. Short break, and we will be back with map three, which is going to be overpass. See you soon.